Hey, good morning, Pete, North Las Vegas. Um, some parts I ordered about a week and a half ago finally came in so I can uh, get back on this AR-308 or probably more correctly an LR-308. And as I've mentioned in other videos, this is not an AR-10. It's a DPMS pattern. So therefore it cannot be an AR-10. Even though it does use quite a few AR-10 pattern parts. Okay, so um, some of the issues were when I ordered this mount from American Defense directly, um, what they sent me was a blem. And I, I didn't order a blem. And what they did was they changed the part number around slightly to indicate that it's a blem. So, I mean, they weren't trying to hide anything. They just, they made a mistake and sent me the wrong mount. And uh, so that took a little bit of time, but what they ended up doing was sending me a brand new set of rings because that was what the blem was. Uh, in the other videos I did, I, I showed the uh, the really bad machining on, on the ring that made it a blem. And like I said, since then they sent me two brand new rings. So that's issue number one that got straightened out. Okay, so the primary issue since the last time I did a couple of videos on this rifle was um, when I had it out test firing, it ran fine using a 308 commercial off the shelf stuff. It locked back, it fed, it ejected, it, it did everything well. Um, the issue I had was with uh, some old surplus NATO. And it, more often than not, it was not holding back on the last round. So the lower powered NATO, uh, the way the rifle was originally set up during test firing, it didn't quite have enough gas to lock back on the last round. So, um, and that was with the rifle speed adjustable in the full open position. So, what I discovered was that the, the gas tube that I used on this build was AR-15 spec. It came in somewhere between 15.125, so 15 and an eighth inch long. And it wasn't quite 15 and a quarter, which is your, your larger size gas tube for AR-15. It came in somewhere in the middle. It was like 15.137138, so not quite 15 and an eighth and not quite 15 and a quarter. So on an AR-15, that's that's probably what you want. But for this build, no. And um, Wilson Combat Barrel said, you know, when I ordered it, it's rifle length, but apparently rifle length with a 308 is not quite the same as uh, AR-15. So what I did was I did a bunch of research and I found out that the Armalite, the AR spec, is 15.4 inches for the gas tube length, which um, all my measurements um, showed that that will be the correct length for this rifle. So I'm getting ready to bust this down and, and uh, I'll show you the different length gas tubes uh, in the rifle. And then uh, I'm probably gonna go with the 15.4, maybe the 15.5 that I ordered. So let's get this thing fully busted apart and we'll We'll show you what the different length gas tubes look like inside the receiver. Okay, so the gas tube on the length, or on the left is, that's AR-15 spec. And like I said, that comes in between, I didn't do a real tight measurement on it, but it's coming in between 15 and an eighth and 15 and a quarter. Um, the one in the, in the middle and the one on the right, I just got from White Oak Armament and they will make you a custom gas tube. So the one in the middle is Armalite spec at 15.4 inches. The one on the right is 15.5 inches. And you can see that the, the, the bubble flare on the end of the tubes, uh, it's a little bit bigger and longer with the white oak armament than the one on the left that I purchased from Rifle Speed. So you got a little bit more bearing surface to fit inside the gas key of the bolt carrier. So anyway, I'm going to install these in the receiver and uh, just mock them in and I'll show you where they come in at on, on top of the receiver and where I think that they actually should be. And then uh, I'm going to take my uh, Wilson Combat BCG apart and we'll slide just a carrier in and double check that um, at least uh, the 15.4 is going to fit perfect without any kind of interference on the uh, gas key. Okay, so this is the original uh, AR-15 spec gas tube that I that I had installed in here. 
uh, the first time I took the rifle out and test fired it. And like I was saying, it's, I think that maybe this is not the, the problem, but I think it's contributing to the problem. I don't think that there's enough engagement on the end of this gas tube here with the, uh, the gas key on the, uh, the bolt carrier. Um, the end of this gas tube should be more in the middle of the, uh, the cam cutout in the receiver. So the end of this gas tube should be ending up right about here. So now I'm going to take the Armalite spec, the 15.4 inch gas tube. We'll install that and uh, you'll see that it's going to protrude further into the receiver and end up more towards the middle. And, uh, then I'll put the 15.5 in just, just for the heck of it. Um, if there's no interference using the 15.5, I'll probably just stick that in here and save the 15.4 uh, for maybe another build or as a spare gas tube. But anyway, let's slide the, uh, the correct Armalite spec in here and you'll see where it's supposed to be. Okay, so that's the Armalite 15.4 um, inch spec. And you can see it's ends up almost in the middle of the cam cutout, which is, which is where it should be. Okay, I'm gonna put the 15.5 in here. And then, like I said, I'm gonna test fit uh, both the 15.4 and five with the bolt carrier, make sure that there's no interference issues. Okay, so that's the 15.5 and you can see it's, uh, it looks like maybe just slightly further in past the center of the cam cutout. I don't know, that's pretty close to right in the middle. Okay, so let's get the BCG, I'll get the bolt out and we'll start sliding the carrier in and out and uh, see if there's, this gas tube's gonna slam into the back of the gas key. I may end up having to go with the Armalite spec 15.4. Okay, so this is the 15.5, which is uh, you know, a tenth of an inch bigger than the Armalite spec, but using this Wilson Combat bolt carrier, I don't have any, I can't feel any contact with that, the end of the gas tube inside the, uh, the gas key of the bolt carrier, so I think we have plenty of clearance. And off camera, I slammed this thing really hard just to see if there was gonna be any issues and the gas tube did not shift position at all. I don't have the gas tube pinned in, but I was holding on to it with my fingers so I could see if it was moving at all and, and it wasn't. So I think I'm gonna run to 15.5 and then keep the 15.4 as a spare. Okay, I also forgot to mention in the last clip that what I did was just to make sure that I had absolute clearance between that bolt carrier gas key and the end of that gas tube was I pulled this gas tube out of its correct location where it gets pinned in and I backed it all the way past that hole and I still did not have any interference. So as far as the 15.5 on this build, um, I, I'm convinced that we're good to go with the slightly oversized uh, gas tube and the goal is to try to get as much gas as I can into that bolt carrier okay so something else I forgot to mention about the gas tubes at the beginning of this uh, section um, the reason I had to go to white oak armament and get the correct armalite spec is I could not find anybody making straight gas tubes at the correct length for an adjustable gas block um, I was able to find 15.4 um, and 15.5 um, set up for a standard gas block, and that's the gas tubes that have the bend in them. But I could not find straight ones, so that's the reason for white oak armament. And also, when they uh, sent me the, uh, the two uh, gas tubes, they included uh, three uh, pins to uh, get it pinned in. So they, they give you two that you need for the two gas tubes and then an extra one in case you, uh, you need one. Okay, so the third thing that we're gonna address here today, um, it's not a problem yet, but I can see where it might become one. And um, what I noticed on this particular build, and when I first put the rifle together, I just decided not to worry about it, but I've decided recently that I'm going to worry about it. Um, this bolt carrier 
group, the back of the, this bolt carrier group, when you close these two halves up, it's supposed to come down and it's supposed to push this in off of the retainer pin. So as this receiver comes down and mates with the lower, it's supposed to take tension off of this retainer pin. And I'm trying to do it with one hand. It's just, okay, so when it comes down, it's supposed to move the buffer off the pin. I can't do it with one hand. These 308 buffer springs are a little stiffer than the AR-15s. Um, when I close this up, you can see that I'm almost beyond halfway before it just starts to contact the buffer and take tension off the pin down there. And I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it move. You can see it move, but I mean, it's just, it's barely coming off that, that pin. So there's quite a few things that can cause this. Um, your receivers are out of spec. Uh, your bolt carrier is a little bit too short. Um, they didn't drill the hole correctly uh, for the buffer retainer. It's sticking too far in and probably a host of other issues that can cause this. Um, for me, the, the easiest way to fix it is to install an offset buffer retainer. Now you can see the step, that lower step. Let me get a focus. All right, so it doesn't want to focus. The lower step gets captured by the, uh, the buffer tube. And you can see that the pin is offset onto the very edge where the retainer on your, uh, your mill spec, the pin sits right in the center. So by putting this offset in there, that allows the buffer to come out just a little bit more and allows more engagement with the BCG and keeps it off the retainer pin. Now this was the original buffer that I had in during testing and I don't see any signs to where it was getting beat up or, or eaten up. And when you have this problem, it, it usually starts chewing up the, the very edge of the buffer. And that's when you know you, you've got this problem. And I don't really see this problem on this, this particular buffer, but like I said, um, that's, that's too close for my, for my liking. So I'm gonna pop the, uh, the castle nut loose. I'm gonna back this off for a turn or two and uh, put the offset in there. Okay, so I bought a spare offset. I have the offset installed and you can see that probably at least half of the, uh, the shelf or the notch has been captured by the, uh, the buffer tube. Um, that shiny metal is not carrier tilt. That's just for me sliding the spring in and out about 10 times since I built this rifle. So anyway, that looks like that's gonna work out okay. Okay, so there's a side-by-side -side comparison between mill spec and the, uh, the offset. Um, let me turn this around a little bit on the side so you can get a better idea of what's going on. Okay. Let's get the buffer in and see what it looks like. Okay, so with the offset, you can see we have much better engagement. You can see it just starts to make contact right as it hits the top. And then you can see that it's pushing it in and it came completely off the uh, retainer, the buffer retainer pin in there. So, that looks like it worked out pretty good. Okay, so for now I'm gonna leave the Aero Precision uh, buffer back in the rifle and recreate the original conditions when I first got the rifle out and checking for function. And um, I think with the longer gas tube, I think that may resolve the uh, last round issue with the NATO ammunition. Um, if it doesn't, I can put the Odin back in, and this is an adjustable, if you're not familiar with them. And I have this set up for 3.45 ounces, which is as light as I can go with their, with the kit and the, uh, the buffer weight configuration. So right now what's in here is what I originally had, Aero Precision 3.8 ounce. And then if I still have lockback issues, we'll try the the lighter uh, adjustable Odin. Okay, so one last thing I thought I'd share today is um, 
what I discovered is that the Wilson Combat and the Odin Works bolt carrier groups, um, they're identical. Um, every little machining mark, every cut, everything, they are exactly the same. Um, so wherever Wilson Combat is sourcing their BCGs, apparently Odin Works is getting theirs from the same place. Um, I got a little bit curious and I tore both of them apart because on the packaging for Odin Works, they're showing their bolt configuration as a high pressure bolt. And if you're not familiar with large caliber AR rifles, there can be problems with primers. It seems to affect um, six and a half Creedmoor more than 308, but with the standard uh, dimension uh, pin and pin hole on the bolt, um, you can run into issues with your primers. You get primer smear from the ejector, you can get flattened primers, uh, punctured primers. In some cases, the primer can pop out all the way. So what the industry did was they modified the diameter of the firing pin. They made the tip of the firing pin a little bit smaller and uh, the bolt hole than a standard size. So anyway, because Odin Works listed theirs as high pressure, I got curious about the Wilson Combat. So I tore them both apart and... Both firing pins are interchangeable. The bolt hole uh, size looks identical to me. I couldn't see any different size. I don't have a pin set or a pin gauge set to positively say that, but just by the firing pins being interchangeable, that tells me that Wilson Combat is also using a high pressure bolt. And I don't remember them advertising that. So that could be a bonus or an added feature. And uh, why Wilson Combat didn't mention that in their literature, I don't know. Maybe they did and I missed it. But anyway, um, as I was saying at the beginning of this clip, these bolt carrier groups are identical. So if you buy Odin Works, it's the same as a Wilson Combat and vice versa. Okay, well, I think that's going to be it for today. Uh, I'm going to get this rifle uh, finished back up. And I'm going to do another video on something I discovered about the rifle speed that maybe when I initially installed it, I was a little bit confused about, but that'll be in a separate video. But uh, anyway, yeah, we'll get this rifle put completely back together. And the uh, next video, we'll be uh, testing and see if we get this thing to hold back on the last round using uh, NATO ammunition. All right, Pete North Las Vegas. Over and out.